with me this morning is Dr. Harry Smith. He is the County Medical Officer of Health for the County of St. George Central. I thank you so much for taking the time to be with me, Dr. Smith. A very good morning to you. Good morning to you and and to all your loyal listeners. It is nice to have you here. During the flood, during a flood, water for drinking purposes may become contaminated with bacteria. One one of the many things that we'll be talking about this morning, but let's just deal in that area of water. So if flood water uh, may drinking um, contaminated with bacteria, viruses, and other organisms that can spread diseases, what do you advise members of the public to do in a case like this outside of the standard boil your water? Okay. Um, well, our water supply generally from us is, is clean and portable. That means it can, we can we drink. You can drink it. And they do an excellent job. I mean, we have to uh, thank our relevant state agencies for keeping things in check. Uh, for the most part, of course, you get complaints occasionally that they may have a little issue with their um, pipe and water supply. But for the most part, the providers would clean portable drink, well, drinking water. Also, our garbage disposal and stuff is, is normally up to mark. Uh, so the thing is, hopefully, no, I'm not sure if you if you collect water from your own, uh, for your own self, and you don't get it through a standpipe or, or water, a, a standard wa- water supply, then you uh, mm-hmm. run the risk of um, exposing yourself to contaminated water. Mm. Um, so if so, uh, this this will be specifically for people who do not get this uh, water supply from Wasa, which I'm not sure how many of, um, of our listeners would, 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 would fall into that category. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, if you, you you suspect your water supply might not be pure, because I'm assuming you will try to get a pure water supply for yourself. Yes. Um, you can add a small amount of bleach to a certain amount of water. Now there's a fixed ratio of how much bleach to add to. A, a certain amount of water. Um, I could go into the details of that. I mean, it could be a bit boring. I mean, you, if well, you want to... Don't just that. It can confuse folks because anytime you talk about using bleach mm-hmm. and, and, and water, you ask your people to make any kind of mixture that is kind of dangerous. It's kind of let, yes. let them stay on the safe path. Right. Because then it becomes discretionary mm-hmm. and, and it can do more harm than good in a case like that. Right. I mean, if you don't follow the specific instructions for mixing. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. cooking. If you don't follow your instructions of how much salt, how much sugar and stuff to put, it wouldn't come out as, you know, you might you might get it when you buy it. So you, you, you're a Trinidadian, a Trinidadian, a Trinidadian, and you know we talk about a pinch of salt. <laughs> you know, you got to careful with the following the measurements. We do a pinch of salt. So, okay, all right. Right, right. But the important thing is uh, outside of the mixture, Mm-hmm. Outside of the mixture is to is to boil your water, which is a standard thing. Right, boil water. I mean, m- most people I assume will get their supply their water mm-hmm. supply from water, mm-hmm. um, and so that that's that's generally drinkable. Um, it's for folks who are not getting their, their st- or they think they want their water their water supply is contaminated. Mm-hmm. Then you're looking at the um, and you you need some water to drink. Uh, then uh, you now again I know water provides waterborne trucks and people have tanks and storage containers. So they, they sh- I, I I'm not familiar with how many people actually do not get a safe water supply in mm. our country. Uh, if you think, as again, if your water supply is contaminated, then you have to, and you need to drink, I mean, you need to drink to live, uh, then you need to look into the potential of mixing, which, as, as you pointed out, can be tricky for some mm. folks, because um, mm. basically the standard thing is one liter of water, you take two drops, just two drops, not nothing else, just two drops of bleach. To, 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 and let it stand for 30 minutes and that will help to purify it. Now, the truth is, you, some people, when they get their water, sometimes when you open it up, I know by me, when I open my water uh, tap, sometimes I smell chlorine. The truth is, uh, our water, you, they put chlorine in it to mm. kill the bacteria that you're speaking about. So mm-hmm. it's a normal thing that they do. And of course, they do it in a, a controlled manner. I mean, they, they are the ones, the, the experts, so they know how much, uh, let's say, chlorine to put in the water. Uh, of course, if we ask some other folks to do that, of course, it can be a little challenging, as mm-hmm. you mentioned, with a pinch of salt. These guys uh, normally have a measuring gauge and stuff like that. Yes. They, and, they, and they have checks and controls. Exactly. <laughs> we at our home, uh, we may not be as, uh, <laughs> as, as, as sophisticated. As judicious, yes, <laughs> as, as we're supposed to be. All right. Yes. Uh, the voice you're hearing is that of Dr. Harry Smith. Um, and you got in here on a, on a good morning. It's a nice Sunday morning, so yes. that's, that's really good. All right. Uh, farmers are the other ones I want to look at, uh, Dr. Smith. Farmers particularly have been affected by the flood waters, it does raise the question, how do we know which vegetables have been flood affected and are they consumable? Well, that's a good question. Now, to be honest with you, I am not a um, farmer. I'm not a, um, I, I don't, I must confess, I don't go and pro- uh, purchase fresh mm-hmm. produce. Uh, 
I, we, we as doctors, when a person mm. comes to us, we have to take their word for it that you know what they're telling us is the truth, and we make our diagnosis and stuff based on what you're told. Mm. Um, I assume well, I have to assume people are good, and people will know they will know if their crops were flooded, and they will dispose of those, those crops. Now, you may have people who may still uh, want to uh, sell those things. Uh, um, because I'm, it comes with experience, and because I'm not a fresh market produce, uh, uh, purchaser, I will, what I will say is you look and you smell. You have to use your instincts to see what mm -hmm. looks contaminated in terms of how it appears. You may find black or white specks on it. Um, uh, uh, it will look, it may smell a little off. So you have to use your, 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 your own personal buying skills here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, not a, I'm not from the um, consumer affairs division and stuff, so I, I, I'm, that's not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I depend on people saying the truth. Uh, that's why I make my uh, judgments. So mm -hmm. I would say uh, make you have to f verify from the uh, person who's selling it to you that was this exposed to flooding and stuff. But again, if it has been exposed to flooding, it should not be sold. One of the things that I want to do is have you around every Sunday morning, Doctor, because uh, you renew my faith. What is the statement you made? Those who know that their products have been affected should not sell it. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you are a believer in human nature. Well, I like uh, that. That's why I started off <laughs> saying that uh, we as doctors depend on people telling us the truth. If you come and tell us your head hurting you and, you, and this and that and vomiting, I have to believe that's what's really happening to you. Now, of course, people may fake that and to get a sick leave. And I mean, I don't want to go into those sort of things, but I mean, I depend on people telling me truth, but I mean, we have to face reality. And, you uh, expect <laughs> the truth, and of course, there is human nature. <laughs> yes, and so, do I have a poly Do I Can I tell if a person is lying and stuff? I guess that, that depends on your, your life skills. Mm, all right, it's, uh, <laughs> it's 10 minutes after 10 o'clock, Dr. Uh, Harry Smith we're talking uh, to. After the flood waters recede, there is the possibility of the creation of breeding sites for mosquitoes. Uh, that le leading, of course, to the spread of diseases such as uh, chikungunya, dengue fever, and Zika. How does one prevent mosquito breeding in these cases, doctor? Okay, mosquito breeding. Um, we, I'm assuming most people heard of that, uh, heard of this. Uh, mosquitoes, mm. they go through a life cycle. You know, you have the eggs. Uh, the mosquito is what we see and bite us, and, and uh, what um, provides, um, passes those diseases that uh, mm. Rene B spoke about, uh, the dengue, chikungunya, Zika. Uh, so when these mosquitoes are adults, they lay their eggs, uh, and when the eggs are exposed to water, mm, they, they hatch into larvae. Now, um, so basically what you want to do is make sure you don't have these containers of water that can allow for mosquitoes to lay their eggs. Um, what you can do, so flower bases are a common site where mosquitoes breed. Um, even if you, have, if you collect water in barrels, you need to make sure those are covered properly and are treated appropriately. Uh, and so basically when you have overgrown bush with garbage strewn in there, these styrofoam containers and plastic containers, they collect water in there. So you, we, 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 we need to, I mean, we say it all the time, our, our sanitation, we need to ensure that um, the, these things, we, I, I see it all the time. You know, you see, you're driving in your road and you see people throwing things out of the um, bottles and stuff out the window. Mm -hmm. uh, these things mm -hmm. will collect water and provide a perfect breeding site for mosquitoes. So a lot of response becomes on us to ensure that uh, these containers are not there. Who put them there? I mean, they don't walk across the road and come into the um, bushes and, and onto the sides of the mm -hmm. road or into the back of your house. I mean, sometimes we keep a lot of things in the back of our house or in uh, wrong house surroundings that stores fridges or other things that are not in use again and they're outside there collecting water. And uh, so, I mean, a lot of it depends on the environment. The reality is we live in an environment and man has been encroaching on the environment. Uh, and I'm not, not saying encroaching, but we're we we are working with the environment, but we tend to take advantage in that we we litter, we, we put things there, and uh, we expect, I guess, the corporation or whoever to come and clean it up first, which is, uh, which is, uh, which can happen. But I mean, if we keep our surroundings clean, that will prevent uh, water from collecting in these things we leave behind, and that that's the main thing to prevent uh, mosquito breeding. We need to keep our surroundings clean uh, and not litter. We are negligent. We do not do what we are supposed to do. We expect other people to clean up after us. And then we pay a price and we expect those people who should not have been taking care of that problem in the first place now have to come and clean up after us. Yes. Doctor uh. has been very gentle here this morning. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, all accounts tell you that what happened in the last, with the last flood, as has happened with floods before and will with floods after that, is about 40% the flood. The unpredictability will give you a factor of about 15. That takes you to 55. The human input into the chaos 
is no less than 45%. And, and, and at some point, we just have to face it for what it is. We're not paying attention. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. And unless we really get real with ourselves, we will come back every year, every rainfall, every runoff period with the same cry, the same problems, and risking our health to the same level. And we complain. We say, well, this not there, mm. the flood here, the government can do this, the, this business can do that. And it's the same thing. We hear it over and over, as you said. And um, and nobody realizes uh, or could see that, you know, the, the input that we have, the same person who's littering, throwing this here, there, the, the stove and fridge out and whatever, and, and leaving their rotten things all over the place, will be the ones who make the most noise mm -hmm. or who make one developing areas that are not meant for development on riverbanks and stuff that causing soil erosion and stuff. They are the same ones who will now come and say, but this, they, they're not, they're mm -hmm. not um, given, they're not taking care of my, 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 my surroundings, they're not, they're not doing this, but they put themselves in institutions or they create the situation. So mm -hmm. we, are, I guess as human beings, we don't have a see, um, we don't have mirrors in front of us, so we can't really see what we are doing. We see everybody else's fault. But mm -hmm. we don't, we don't realize or appreciate what, how we contributed to the situation we're in. Uh, this is a bit a field uh, for where for for for, 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 for the um, parameters we are this morning, but this is going to necessitate some legislation to ensure people start paying for their nastiness. But this legislation and, and, and carelessness. I mean, yeah. enforcement then. Uh, yes, yes, because we have a lot of laws. As yes. The thing is just that um, I guess it's like speeding and stuff. People will speed if they see a policeman is so long. You know, you do wear a seatbelt. You, you see the policeman, you put your seatbelt. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have laws. It's just that uh, sometimes, we, and I, I see, it, I, I find it so amazing. You go away, they follow every the rules, mm -hmm. I guess, because enforcement. Mm -hmm. But in Trinidad, we tend to think, uh, unfortunately, we tend to feel that we can, once we can get rid of it, we... The we only reason people follow rules when they go away mm -hmm. is not because they care, is because the laws are in forced and you will pay a price. Yes. People always think that I'm a little draconian and stuck up with my thing about enforcing and charging people and stuff. But the only time the society is going to start following the rules of the society is when the rules of society actually mean something. And okay. you pay a price for it. All right. A uh, lot of folks uh, who are maybe hearing us this morning, uh, they say, hey, guys, I heard what you guys say. Okay, I'm aware of all these things. But there are a lot of other people who may not be hearing us this morning. What sort of outreach is going on, to the best of your knowledge, from the ministry to get out to people who are, uh, are not easily accessible so they have this information? Right. Um, so you have, well, hopefully, well, you say, if not watching this radio show, they have print uh, there are things in the, the newspapers. Um, the local health centers mm -hmm. will have relevant flyers and stuff mm -hmm. that you can get this. Uh, we um, obviously, we can't, we may not, because of our, uh, our, let's say, our staffing issues, we may not be able to go to every home. Uh, but there are agencies, the Insect Vector Control Division within the Ministry of Health, where they try to go to literally every household in Trinidad and Tobago. They map out the entire country and they try to go. Now, of course, they are also limited in the fact that uh, there are areas I know that mm -hmm. they are, because of their own security, they are hesitant to go into. And so you find that those areas may not be getting the sort of attention they, they, they ought to get because, uh, again, we create a problem. I mean, I cannot ask a person to go to an area where they think their life is in danger and they tell mm. me people are getting killed there. Uh, now, they, you tell them, okay, well, go with police. Then they say, well, when they go with police, now they are marked, they, they're labeled as um, informants. Mm. And mm. so it's a, it's a double-edged sword. So and, and I asked that question, Doctor, and I'm glad that you, you, you went there. You went exactly where I was thinking. And the, the question then comes in, the community activists even though that has got a very bad shade <laughs> uh, for the past week and a half. But the community activists, the, those leaders in the community, is the ministry doing anything to bring them together, pass that information, and hope that they will carry it? Because a lot of folks are going to say, but people know this. No, people may have heard this. And most of the times, a lot of people hear it from the ground troops. The ground troops may not have the facts, or they may, may be well-intended but misrepresent the facts. So it, 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 then, it then comes on the health ministry because it becomes a problem for all of the nation to bring these folks together. Is something, can something, is something being done to bring the community activists and the leaders together so they can get the information to take back? Okay, um, very good question. Um, the, now that goes into the area of communication. Uh, we have our corporate communication uh, division in Ministry of Health, which I'm not a part of, uh, but mm. as far as I know, they do engage with our people on the ground to get the messages out uh, as to the exact who you engage with. Uh, depends. I mean, I have spoken to community leaders already in the past. I mean, and people are like, well, why do not? You know, because you don't know if he's strapping or whatever. But um, the, the, the thing is, it, it now depends on the ground. Uh, the source. So the Ministry of Health obviously want to get to the uh, 
the, the everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want mm-hmm. to get, that's why I'm on this show, and we go and read to, uh, TV and, and they put things in the media, and we be, be informal workers. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, how no it all depends on your relationship with the relevant community leaders uh, as to how what comes out down because when you have people that are mm, let's say not agreeing with each other because you have community leaders that don't agree with each other so if you talk to one the next one will be vexed mm-hmm. and then you could you can cause a little problem for yourself because you want to reach the whole community but uh, you're asking specifically what the Ministry of Health is doing and that will be the um, bit of the corporate communications unit uh, they will be able to advise best, but as far as I know, that they are doing their best to get the messages mm. out. Uh, are they? Are we speak, speaking to all community leaders? Uh, that one might be, prove a little challenging because I mean, mm. how unfortunately it isn't a, a post mm. or paid position where you say I'm a community leader and this. I'm, so how do you verify who is the community leader? And one stuff? of the things that I find that's happening um, that would be a great ally in a case like this. And again, you may want to tell me I talk to your communication department, but let me put it at you uh, first. Anyhow, is this whole question of having the use of the internet because everybody, no matter where they are, somebody's on Facebook somewhere. Trust me. Uh, everybody's got a telephone, and everybody's telephone has got something on it. So how how, how is that uh, that that, that, that um, dissemination uh, tool being used? Well, yes. I mean, Facebook, uh, let's say the internet, the social media is a fantastic forum. Now, the, what I find even myself and other people, while there are things on YouTube, the Ministry House has a YouTube site, a Facebook site, Twitter, um, and 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 we have a, there's a lot of mm. media content out there on the mm. internet. The truth is, um, if I'm at home looking for entertainment, uh, what I Fine is that people tend to look to see where parties, where lime is, and mm. stuff, and not necessarily go and look where out of where I've been bitten by a mosquito. Mm. You know, because well, uh, I, can, <laughs> I can tell you about my party, but anyway, <laughs> exactly. You know, no, no, so but, but people but, use uh, social media to, to socialize and but to lime. Don't and stuff we, like. don't we then, um, uh, 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 abreast of that fact, do we not then find some people who will make uh, you can make a mosquito conversation sexy, you can, I mean, uh, attractive, you can find ways to have people. Who, who are going to raise these topics in unconventional forums. And, 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 and that, that is something else. And I, I'm throwing it at you, and I know that your colleagues are listening this morning and your communications department, they got you here. Because we have to find these ways of having the conversation carried by the most important tool, which is the user. We can initiate whatever we want, but if you get some users walking with it, they walk with it. I got about just about five minutes with you again, Doctor. I do want to ask you this. Identify for me, please, the 10 free new dangers or dangers we should look for after a situation like a Brett. The top three health uh, dangers we should look for specifically. Okay. Um, after any major catastrophe, you know, thankfully, Brett was not as bad as, um, let's say, Ivan and Grenada and Gilbert and Jamaica. Um, the thing is, from a public health and healthcare perspective, mm-hmm. the first thing is you need to have clean water. We mm-hmm. need water to live. It must be clean. You need to somehow clean up then whatever is left back, the, the debris, the, the mess, the silt. Because when you rivers overflow and stuff, you know, um, cesspits and stuff overflow, and so you get sewer mixing. So that, that, comes, mm-hmm. that gets into your home and stuff. You need to then clean that up. So number one and two is, is top two, I'll add a third one. Cl- drinking water must 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 be clean. Mm-hmm. Your environment has to now be clean because mm-hmm. it will be it, it would have been dirty. And of course, we need to in- ensure our food supply is also um, clean. And that's so that might in- involve importing from other areas because obviously if your local supply might have been contaminated. So those are the top three things, yeah. my health wise. Because and, and so you realize it's not a medicine or a tablet that is the most important public health thing. It is mm-hmm. water litter, and we take it for granted because. Mm. Also, prevention is what's upon the cure because doctors tend to see things after you get sick. But the mm. best thing is obviously not to get sick, and uh, so that's just where prevention. So, and we take it for granted. We take these things for granted. When necessary, yes. How does one treat with food that has come into contact with flood waters because of what you just mentioned? You've got exposed uh, all, all, all kind of bacteria. The box bags and and canned foods. Uh, I, can can I say that my canned food is safe? My box food is safe after flood water has uh, waters have entered the home yes um no uh food that has been directly in contact with um obviously these flood waters and stuff must be discarded mm-hmm. uh cans are protected and so what you recommend that they are washed properly and sterilized uh, so the outside because if the outside was contaminated that, that's the outside the food inside of the cans are still good and mm-hmm. you can you can use those but of course you don't want your hands to um by touching the can you might get your hands dirty so what mm-hmm. you recommend is wash the cans uh, sterilize them first before you actually use the food in them 
but the actual food that has come into the surface in a, as you mentioned, cardboard box or mm. bags and stuff, these things are porous. Well, means water can get into them, and so the food in them will not be safe. Some people will argue, well, my um, my cereal, for instance, is inside of a protective um, plastic, um, plastic on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that safe? Well, well uh, th those things are not, the plastic is more to keep the freshness and not necessarily keep water out. Well, especially right. <laughs> okay, got you. Got you. Doctor, any other advice you want to pass on to our listeners this morning? Dr. Harry Smith is my guest. Um, my thing is a little off topic. But the reality Please. is um, what gets us sick in Trinidad, and we take it, we, we accept this as, um, as, our, as mm. supposed to happen. What gets our Trinidadians sick and what kills us isn't um, so much flooding and stuff. The reality is, is diabetes, mm. cancer, hypertension. We kill it and we, we, we think, okay, our parents died from it, our grandparents died from it, so we should die from it. The reality is it is preventable. It's mm. our lifestyle has uh, got us to where we are today. We No, the thing is, I can't tell a person who's accustomed to eating a certain diet, l looking a certain way, maybe a little overweight and stuff, um, sugar a little out of control. It's not easy to then change your lifestyle. It's, once you get into a habit, smoking, whatever, you can't just stop it. But that is what has us in hospital. Mm. That is what's killing us. Mm -hmm. So please uh, watch your lifestyle. So basically it's to uh, exercise and eat well. Exercise, eat well. Yes. Moderation. Even everything yes. also works. Yes. Dr. Harry Smith, uh, County Medical Officer of Health at the St. George uh, Central uh, Area. Thank you so very much for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thank you for having me. A, having a, me. Won a wonderful Sunday. And uh, th 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 as I said before, this is a man I'm, I'm going to ask around on Sunday mornings. He really believes in human nature. <laughs> oh, they may tell me the truth. No, they ain't going to lie, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but the thing is, I, you have to, you have to use your own to life skills. You've got to, to believe. Yeah, you have to use your life skills to tell. Because, I mean, people, I think, lying to me, mm. but I can't go and say, yeah, well, I, I try not to tell them directly that you're lying to me, but I mean, you have to use your 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 tool and your, your your social skills and your life skills to know well what really is the truth. Because you, you know, you hear the story. Every story has three sides: the truth, you, you know, your side, my side, and the truth. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm <laughs> grudgingly uh, bothering you on the side because uh, the one I'm grudgingly admiring you, but I know I am too jaded. Doctor, thank you so very much. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're